Hi, and welcome to Code Tutorials. In this video, we'll be taking a look at the before-after comparison slider block, which is part of our key blocks for Gutenberg Premium plugin. Right now, we're on the page that has several before-after comparison sliders added to it as a way of showcasing the different things you can do with this element. This block is designed to create attractive, engaging visual elements that entice visitors to interact. The slider can switch between two images, the so-called before and the after, and visitors can reveal one or the other of the images by moving the line that divides them. What you choose to show in your slider depends on your niche, but this block can be very useful for a variety of businesses. And beyond its inherent potential to appeal to visitors, it's very easy to use and you don't need any specialized knowledge whatsoever to set it up. It includes user-friendly options that make customizing it incredibly easy. And in this video, we're going to go through those options together so you can see what's included and how best to use them. So, let's head over to the back end. You're going to need a page or post to work in. I prepared this one. Once here, you can click on this plus symbol to open the block selection. This is where you'll find all the blocks you have installed on your site. You can use the search function to look for a specific block or you can browse through the selection. You'll see all your blocks here, both Gutenberg's native blocks and key blocks and anything else you may have installed on your site. You can recognize key blocks by their reddish pink icons. At the start, you'll see the premium blocks and a bit below them, the free ones. So you can pick a block from the assortment here. All you need to do is click on it to select and drag it over to the page. Alternatively, let me close this so it doesn't interfere with the view, you can click on the plus sign button within the page or post to add a block. Then you can select your block from here or if it's not immediately displayed, you can search for it. Given that the one I want is already here, I'll simply click on it to select. And this will add it to the page. All right. I now have a new before-after comparison slider block on the page. And by default, this is what the block looks like. It has two placeholder images, one for before, one for after, and some text on the dividing line. So to customize it, we just need to replace this dummy content. I'll start with the first option, the image before. Click here to add a new one, and then upload whichever one you want. I added mine to the media library beforehand, so I only need to select it now. And there, the image appears in the slider right away. I'm going to do the same for the image author now. I have that one in my media library as well. So just select. OK. Just two options where we replace the images and the slider already looks ready for use. But there is an important thing to keep in mind about the images. The ones you choose to use for the slider should have the same dimensions to make the switch between before and after look seamless. Unfortunately, I can't show you the effect of dragging the divider because it won't work from within the editor. We'll look at it from the live site page in a moment, but first I want to go over a few other settings. Right beneath the images, we have the handle text option. It's for replacing the text that appears on the divider between the before and after images. It says drag by default, but you can simply type over it to get something new instead. And under that, we have the orientation option. With this option, you can switch your slider from a horizontal to a vertical one. Right now, the slider is set to horizontal, so the dividing line has split it into left and right along the y-axis. Let's see that on the live page. I just need to update first. This is my page front end, which I opened beforehand, and when I refresh, the slider is there. Now when I try dragging the divider, it moves seamlessly from left to right and vice versa to reveal one image or the other. That's the horizontal orientation. If we go back to the options and switch the orientation to vertical, then the split happens along the x-axis. I'll update to save the change and then we can see how it looks on the front end. And refresh. There it is now. The vertical slider splits the images into top and bottom with the divider moving smoothly up and down to show one or the other of the images. 
So those are your two options for orientation. With the design I've chosen to make, I'll be setting this to horizontal. There. The next option after this is the default offset. It lets us adjust the starting point of the divider between our images. When I change the offset value, we can see how the dividing line moves. So you can easily change how much of the images will be visible by moving this line. The default offset is preset to 50%, which puts the line straight in the middle. But I want mine to be just off center, so I'll put 46% as the value here. And now we can see that the divider's initial position is more to the left. Alright, that covers most of the content options. We have one more section here, and it is the advanced. It contains the additional CSS classes option. You can use it to create a specific class for this element, and then use that class to refer to your element when creating CSS that would style it. Okay, those were all the options we had in the content tab. Let's move on to the style tab. Here we have the handle top offset option. With it, I can adjust the vertical position of the circle on the dividing line, its handle if you will. In essence, I can move the circle up and down by adjusting this option. The value you set can be either negative or positive. The negative puts the circle pretty high up and the positive will put it closer to the bottom of the dividing line. Also, the unit of measure you use can be pixels, percentages or the viewport width. I want to put minus 16% for my slider, so I'll clear this value and switch to percentages. Then I'll simply type in minus 16. Okay, now the circle or handle is here. Alright, after that we can adjust the dimensions or simply put size of the circle that makes our handle. Setting the value for the handle circle size option can be done with the slider or by typing in a value. I'm happy keeping the default settings, so I'll clear this to get it back. Okay, next we have the handle line size. The handle line is actually our divider, the line splitting the slider into two images. With this option, we can adjust the width of that line, so you can make it as wide or narrow as you like. It's entirely up to you. I'm happy with the default width, so I'll just clear this. Perfect. Following that, we have the handle circle color. We can use that to change the color of the handle circle as well as the dividing line. You can see what a different color might look like. I'll reset this selection, I want to keep my line white. Then we have the handle text color option. So we can easily change this text within the circle or handle. Again, I want to keep the default setting, so I'll simply reset this. Ok. After that, we have the handle text typography. This is a collection of different options for adjusting the look of your text. So there's the font family option, where we can change the font used for our text. Then we can change the font size for the text, or adjust its weight. This drop down offers all kinds of settings, and we can also transform the text and change it from uppercase to lowercase or capitalized. After that, there is the style option, where we can change our text to, for example, italic. Then the decoration option, which allows us to add a line under, over, or through our text. And finally, we have two options that can help us with any spacing issues, namely the line height and the letter spacing options. Ok, those are all the things we have within the typography options. We only have one tab left to consider, advanced. The options here are something you get with every one of the key blocks for Gutenberg, and they serve to set how an individual block will look and act on the page. For example, there are response notes and motion effect settings here. While the options under advanced are undoubtedly useful, as they can help you adjust the block positioning, background, border, and more, they affect blocks as a whole. They aren't specific to the before after comparison slider block, so we won't be covering them in this tutorial. And with that, we're done. I'll press update to save my work. And once I've done that, I can check how my slider looks on the front end. Refresh the page and there. A horizontally oriented slider that moves between its before and after image smoothly, with the dividing line and handle style to match the design I wanted. 
We covered all the relevant options you need to know for adding a slider with before and after images to your site. All that's left is to decide on your design and get started. If you need any design inspiration, you can go back to the page we started from. It showcases different things you can do with the before-after comparison slider block. Here, for example, is the version I chose to copy for this tutorial. But there are many, many more possibilities than the examples listed here. This is just to give you an idea and tickle your imagination. In any case, we hope you found this tutorial on the before-after comparison slider block helpful. And if you have any questions after watching this video, or comments or suggestions you'd like to make, please drop us a line in the comment section below. Also, make sure to subscribe to our channel and be the first to learn about any new tutorials and theme guides. Thank you for watching!